Um, I work as part of the, um, or I lead the engineering and surface access appraisals team, which um, is part of a wider appraisal team. The role of that appraisal team is to build, to challenge, to construct the evidence base that Sir Howard and his fellow commissioners will use at the end of our process to make a recommendation for the best means of providing additional airport capacity and also along the way to develop the materials to which we'll go out to a national cons consultation later this year. Um, a few points about the, um, what I'm going to run through quickly today and one quick point about what I'm not. Um, I'll give a little bit of a talk about the, um, the Commission's process. Um, I think when Howard addressed the first Runways UK event in um, January, he talked a little bit about our plans for Phase 2, as we call the process between the interim report and the final report. That thinking's evolved a bit since then. I'll talk a little bit more about it. I'll also talk about the appraisal framework, how surface transport fits within that appraisal framework. We have a module in there called surface transport. I'll explain a little bit about how that uh, module works, but I'll also explain about how surface transport's about a lot more than just that module. In fact, surface transport is domain to almost all of the work we're going to be doing this year in one sense or another. Um, one thing I'm not in a position to do today, and Actually, I was very grateful talking to people outside that this didn't happen, but there's always a temptation talking to the uh, people from the Commission to badger us a bit and see if you can find out, go on, you must know what the final recommendation is. Um, just to go on record, we don't at the moment. We're at an early stage in the appraisal process. We've just received those revised scheme proposals. We're doing a huge amount of work at the moment to understand their implications. In some cases, to understand what is the proposal. Um, to get to a, really get down into the nuts and bolts. Um, so we're quite a long way, and I don't think we will have a settled view on the outcome until next summer. So I'm afraid I'm not really in a position to talk about the details of individual proposals. But let me start and run through some of our key dates. Um, this uh, graph, some of you may have seen it before, this chart, it sets out our process for 2014 and 15. Um, we, we kind of see this phase of work of having been, we fired the starting gun in the middle of January when we published the um, appraisal framework for consultation, which we consulted on until early April. Um, in recent weeks, and you've seen all the coverage in the media, and in fact some of the people in this room were involved in preparing them, uh, many thanks, we've received the uh, updated scheme designs. Um, very substantial documents setting out in much more detail than happened last than we got last year the what and the why of each of the three shortlisted proposals we took forward for further consideration. Um, last year submissions were limited to 40 pages in length, um, largely to preserve our own ability to at least snatch a few hours sleep at night between reading them. Um, we did have 58 proposals to consider this year. Uh, last year. This year we're considering three proposals in detail with, while also doing some more work to develop the estuary concept, on which I'll say more a bit later. Um, since the receipt of those advice scheme proposals, the onus of the work has really shifted from the scheme promoter to those of us in the Secretariat. We're now beginning a fairly intensive cycle of appraisals that will take us through really the whole of the summer. Um, I can tell you now, August leave is cancelled this year. Good fun. Uh, it will take us through that period into a, cons a national consultation, which we envisage going out in the kind of early autumn, probably October. Um, now, I've put a bit of a marker here at the bottom of this program. We are doing some work to further understand the implications and credibility of the Thames Estuary proposals. If we determine that there is a credible Thames Estuary proposal, we would of course want to develop and assess that to the same level as the other proposals that may affect this particular element of the timetable that's up on the wall there. Um, I can't tell you anything definitive about that but we will know the decision on the estuary whether or not to take that um, further forward for consideration in September. Um, and then following consultation we go into another round of appraisal and we see whether the consultation has brought, see what the consultation has brought out that affects our thinking on the schemes, whether it has wanted, caused us to want to consider any changes to proposals, to the 
not, not to the overall thrust of them, but to the detailed designs, which enables us to make a decision, hopefully shortly after the general election in the summer of 2015. Um, moving on now to the real meat of today and surface transport. We published an appraisal framework, a uh, final version, as I've said, in April. Um, it contained 16 appraisal modules, um, setting out the different objectives that the Commission wished to appraise its schemes against. One of these, I think it's objective four out of 16, relatively high in the running order, not that there's any particular sense of priority to them, but <laughs> nevertheless, surface transport, relatively near the top, is a surface transport module. And while the module itself contains quite a bit of detail about what we're going to be looking for, what we consider re relevant and useful metrics to be, it really boils down to three, object, three core objectives that we set for surface transport designs. Maximise the number of passengers using sustainable forms of transport. In the draft version of the document, that said public transport. Um, we received what we thought was a quite reasonable pushback that we shouldn't be so prescriptive, that we should be open for ideas for other forms of sustainable transport, that we should keep electric vehicle technology, other options on the table. Entirely agree with that, which is why we changed the final appraisal framework. Um, we're not about prescribing solutions and telling the um, scheme promoters to go away and meet them. We want to encourage innovation. We want to challenge the scheme promoters within a, a broader framework as they can to come up with solutions that meet some not quite high-level objectives as creatively as, creative, creatively as possible. To accommodate the needs of other users of transport networks, such as passenger intercity freight. This one's really important. Um, we've heard from Michelle and from Paul already about the levels of background um, growth on the network, what that's going to mean. I think we've heard two slightly different takes there in terms of the narrative they attached to it. But actually, we answer the background evidence about the growth in London's population, the growth in traffic on road and rail networks is all there to see. This is, can absolutely be taken. We must take this into account. So we need not just to protect the interests of the travelling public as it exists today, but as that travelling public will exist in 2030 and beyond 2030 into the long term. Very important point. Um, some people have said, don't we think there's a tension between those first two objectives? Um, having something that would seem to prioritise a high public transport mode share versus putting more you know, protecting the needs of passengers. Don't you think there's a tension? Well, perhaps there is to a degree, and perhaps actually part of our process is about finding the right balance between the needs of airport users, and um, I thought we had a really good presentation on that to start today, uh, some really good points there about what an airport traveller wants um, and how different that is. is but what part of what we have to pick up is how different that is to what a commuter wants. Um, but also... So how can we balance those commuter needs with those um, airport passenger needs? Very important part of our work. Um, personal reflection here, I've worked in the Department for Transport for five years on rail infrastructure policy. One of my, having moved from rail into aviation, one of my personal reflections would be that often it feels as though the aviation and rail industries, and also I suppose road industries, speak very different languages, speak sometimes, think sometimes to very different um, planning horizons, business cycles. Part of our role as a commission has to be, to, on the commission secretariat, has to be to take all of that into account and present <coughs> rounded recommendations that reflect all of those different priorities, all of those diff, different um, business priorities, public service priorities. So yes, there is attention, and yes, it's deliberate. Um, the third um, objective, enable access from a wide catchment area. Actually, this comes back to one of the points that was made at the very start of today. This is not just about London and the South East. Um, we have, we're very much conscious. We, take, we decided to shortlist options for further development, which existed only within London and the South East. Um, the reasons for that are set out in considerable detail in our interim report, but we're trying to find a long-term airport strategy that works for the whole UK, and we recognise the importance that London and South East airports with good developed route networks provide in supporting the wider UK economy, wider UK connectivity. So we will be looking to see surface access strategies in which provide good access to London, good access across London and the South East, but also we want to see a wider 
regional dimension to that. So all very important objectives there. But this isn't the only way in which surface access is important to us. That's, those are kind of the, the surface access specific objectives. But beyond that, surface access ties into almost everything we do. I said before we have 16 appraisal modules. Um, I've shown some of the more obvious ones there that surface access impacts upon. I picked six out of those 16. Actually, when I sat down to think about it, there were 15 out of the 16 that I could easily have put up there. There was one which is about resilience to fog and disruptive weather conditions and accidents that I thought I might have to push a bit. But the other 15 of 16 modules are all heavily affected by the surface transport strategy. Indeed, I would say, if you ask most people what do you think an airport proposal is, the first, what they will probably think of as an answer is either a design showing a new airport or an existing airport with a new runway attached to it, to which I would say, well, that's fine, but that's only part of the answer because an equally big part of what is an airport expansion proposal is the surface access strategy. It's one of the, alongside the airport master plan, it's one of the key design documents that tells us, the Commission Secretariat, what it is we're appraising. So we will, as part of our appraisal process, look at how the surface access strategy feeds into all of those modules. We'll look at each of those modules has, uh, has a set of objectives, like the ones I showed on the previous slide. Um, each of those objectives, in most cases, will be affected by the surface transport strategy. We have some scope within our programme as we go forwards. If it looks like there's some element of the surface access strategy that's causing difficulties with respect of one of those other appraisals, be it air quality, cost and commercial viability, you can think of the areas that surface access really does have a big impact upon. We can go back to the scheme for motor and talk about whether we need any changes to the surface access strategy. We have some scope within our programme to do that. And of course, when we go out to consultation later this year, there'll be a much wider opportunity for all parties to contribute to that process of helping us really hammer out whether these surface access strategies work. That's why the consulta consultation is so important. Um, a little bit about the nuts and bolts of our work going forward. Um, we are very busy at the moment trying to understand the implications and understand all the details of the surface access strategies that have been put to us. Um, we have some very large submissions to wade through, which is not a complaint. We're very grateful for the level of detail that's been provided. Um, surface access strategies were included as documents alongside the updated scheme designs. That's very helpful. Um, I've already said we may make some change, we may want to talk about some possible changes to those. And surface access, we will want as part of our consultation in October to have a clearly identified surface access strategy, surface transport proposal that goes alongside that so that people can see what's being proposed, when it's proposed by, any phasing that may be inherent in the surface access strategy, so that people can actually understand well, the runway isn't near my house, but the railway line or the road is. What does that mean for me? How can I have my say on it? Um, surface access is important to consider in terms of political deliverability of schemes, something very important that we have to look at. So it, it will be a prominent part of the materials for consultation later this year. Um, at the same time, work is continuing on further understanding the impacts of the Thames Estuary um, proposition. We said in the interim report that we needed to do a bit more work to understand whether a credible option exists in the estuary. We're continuing to work with, all, with interested parties with the scheme promoters, um, some of whom I see represented here in the room today, um, Fosters and Partners, Metro Tidal, IAAG, with the evidence submissions we've received from Transport for London and other bodies to really drill down into what we thought were four key areas around the inner estuary hub concept. Um, surface transport, the first of the uh, studies, um, listed in no order other than the order I choose to list them in now. Um, the habitats and environmental issues, the operational viability and the local economic impacts. So we've just completed a call for evidence, or we've, we've just closed a call for evidence to um, allow people to have the say. We've received some uh, over around 170 responses, um, ranging from some 
quite short expressions of opinion to some very long, very substantial, very detailed evidence submissions. Um, we're working through those. We'll publish the outputs of the studies, the final outputs in July, and allow people to offer comments on those studies when they're published. And a decision will be taken in September over whether an interestry airport should be shortlisted for further development. Um, that wraps up the formal part of my presentation today. Um, obviously, I have focused mainly on process today because that's, that's the stage we're at. We'd hope to be able to say a lot more when we go out to consultation and get more into the details of the scheme design. But I hope that's been helpful in allowing people to understand where we're up to, what we're doing, and how we're going to be looking at the evidence going forwards. Thank you very much, Ola. Thanks.